Let's welcome Mike. He's going to give us a presentation on vectoring tonight. I have a little experience with uh, navigation, having owned a couple airplanes and uh, been a Boy Scout, done some hiking, topo maps, sold the airplane, bought a sailboat, did some navigation with that. Uh, this is a lot different. Typically with navigation, you're trying to find out where you are relative to where you want to go and how to get there. Um, in this case, uh, working with the fox, the fox hunt, the, the equipment is a little less sensitive. Uh, let's just say it's way easier in an airplane. So what I'm going to talk about is the basic antenna system that we built here in the club, we uh, had an antenna build right out here. Built a bunch of these things. We did some uh, basic fox hunts. We'll talk about that. The, the advanced fox hunts where we use some triangulation. And then the, uh, I did a little triangulation exercise in the theoretical sense of how life would be if it was perfect. And then the triangulation from the July 30 fox hunt is, is what I actually drew on paper for my results, and then I did a little GPS experiment, which was interesting. Uh, so the antenna system, we built these. It was uh, Doug, uh, W2VX design, and uh, this is kind of what it looked like, a little uh, T-shaped uh, PVC pipe. The uh, guts are in the little plastic box, and those uh, red things are the antenna wires. It's two dipole antenna separated at uh, half wavelength, and the uh, I highlighted the antenna wires so you can see them in the picture. This is the uh, the guts of what's in the box there. A little diode switching module that alternates uh, between the two dipoles, and uh, the result is hopefully a silent. Uh, signal, um, a null, when you have the antenna pointed at the uh, direction of the fox. Um, there's a little 9-volt power supply that, that runs the whole thing. And this is the uh, details of the circuit card. A uh, little on-off switch up in the top corner there. Uh, don't really use that. I just unplug the battery. Um, the antenna or feed are the two top and bottom wires. The, the antenna going to the radio is out of the bottom. And uh, the attenuation adjustment is something that I needed dearly on this last fox hunt. And I uh, had it set to the top mode and kind of didn't have enough attenuation. Um, anyway, it's the... Uh, version 2 of the W2VX design down in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, in turning the unit on and, and working with it, uh, basically I drew some lines in there to show you kind of what, what we're looking for is uh, the, uh, the null signal is kind of, kind of being a, a cone going out from it. Gets wider out in the, out in the distance. Uh, the lines are just to kind of represent uh, what that might look like if you could see it, but you're basically sweeping this back and forth to try and find that, that null uh, signal. And the other thing to keep in mind is that signal also extends behind you. So if you do a 360 sweep, hopefully you'll, you'll see it at the 180 degree opposite end. So when we first built these things, we took them out to the park for a basic fox hunt where we were all walking around, uh, line of sight, uh, you're close to the fox. Uh, well, it wasn't quite visible, but uh, this is basic triangulation uh, based on that fox hunt. Um, again, doing the sweep to find out where the signal is. This is just the same picture because I didn't have a different one. Um, looking for that null signal, and keep in mind that, that if you find it, hopefully this will identify your first line of position. And <clears throat> this is uh, basically the same thing, but projected in paper, you would be that uh, gender-neutral stick figure. 
uh, there in the middle, and the uh, cones going forward and, and aft would represent uh, basically the, uh, the, the null signal that you're getting from it. Um, and this would be your first line of position. Uh, when you locate that first line of position in this basic uh, fox hunt, you're going to want to take uh, some steps to the right or left far enough away so that you can develop um, a new line of position to where that fox is. So we'll call this the second line of position. If things work out for you and you are getting a good null signal, then what you're going to recognize is that you can eliminate what was behind you. You now kind of know where the fox is. Um, and you kind of want to, at this point, continue triangulating, continue working with it. Um, you don't want to go in with the assumption that it is exactly there. Third line of position, hopefully... It's getting better for you, and you're going to do a fourth, fifth, sixth. Keep walking in on it. Keep closing in on it. Um, what you'll find out is as you play with this stuff that you might have had a bad line of position, and you really didn't have a good direction on, on where it was. So that's the idea to kind of zigzag in on it or, or work your way in on it. And as you get closer, as you get more confident with it, you can probably spot an area that this fox might be in. Now, this was the walk in the park. Um, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> uh, lots of things. Um, you know, block signal, reflected signal, um, interference you're going to get from obstacles, chain link fences, uh, metal buildings, uh, Jerry's motorhome, um, various things that uh, are going to give you a little interference. Um, occasionally, you're going to want to make a 360 sweep and just see how your signal's doing, see if you're doing, um, see if your confidence is there. And the other thing is equipment failures. When we were walking in the park the first time with these things, uh, somebody lost an antenna. Uh, stuff happens. I broke a lead on one of my antennas and had to solder that back on, but not in the park. For the advanced fox hunt, locating a distinct signal, triangulating, going to use uh, map, paper, a uh, few different tools because like this last fox hunt, we were nowhere near the fox, didn't know where it was. We started out at, uh, at uh, uh, Mel's Diner, and it was a free-for-all. So recommended equipment, you know, you, you, again, you want the appropriate radio direction finder. Uh, many of us were using uh, the equipment that we built in the class. Um, Others, uh, like Brian, had something unusual, and, and, and so did Greg, some other stuff. Um, you might want to have a map. Uh, in doing something that's got a little distance to it, you're probably not going to be able to use a line of sight to go to a location unless you can look at a piece of paper and kind of get an idea where, where you're, you want to project that to. Um, you want to be able to project your line of position on, on paper. Uh, might work better for you. Determining the fox location by landmarks or latitude and longitude. Uh, most maps that are available to us are not going to have latitude and longitude on them. Uh, provide detail adequate to navigate to the fox location. Um, you know, it's what I found is it's very hard to get a large paper map. Gas stations don't give them out anymore. AAA doesn't give them out anymore. Um, you kind of have to have one, or you're going to have to print on as large paper as you can and maybe cut and paste and glue a few together. Uh, I used a compass and then a, a protractor. Um, the one I used was one that I had for flying. Um, some thoughts on the topographic map versus a, a, a just regular street map. Um, Topo maps typically have your latitude, longitude, your declination is marked on it. Um, you'll see, you know where magnetic north is, you know where true north is, because when you look 
you take a reading off a compass that's magnetic north and you've got to determine what the declination is local to this area and most of your maps if you have a gas station map or an old triple a map typically north is at the top of the map and there's no indication of what declination is and not even a thought those were street maps they weren't uh, meant for going straight line of sight to where you want to go um, topo maps you know typically if they have latitude longitude on them it's in uh, degrees minutes and seconds you may have a gps that uh, you can program to different uh, formats so you can get degrees minutes and seconds but um, frankly i don't think you'll need a gps it's not that useful for this um, latitude longitude is typically not present on a street map if you happen to have one of those so um, not going to do you much good there. Um, I listed the GPS, but really if you can't find out where you are on a map without a GPS and the map doesn't have GPS capability, um, it might be better off to use the one in your car with the pictures so you can figure out what street you're on. Um, bottom line is, you know, just a paper map, a street map, is probably going to be your best choice for just drawing a line on it um, but for that you're still going to need a compass and a protractor and again large paper maps are hard to find what i have here is just a picture of a compass that i uh, i happen to like this one is uh, one that uh, you can sight and it's got a little magnifier that that shows you what the heading is so you can look at it see it as you point it so you don't have to twiddle dials and figure it out i put it on a, a picture of or it's actually a topo map there that has the magnetic north uh, markers on it you don't need to align the map with magnetic or, or true north just to draw a line on it what you need to know is what your your um, bearing is that you want to transfer to that paper and use a protractor but if you were backpacking or something like that and you wanted to find your position relative to that mountain peak and that mountain peak, uh, then you'd want to line that map up with Magnetic North and, and eyeball those two and figure out where you are on the map. But we're not doing that. This is a Protractor. I happened to took, took a picture of that on top of an old sectional uh, Sacramento this is the aircraft sectional. Um, you can barely see it, but down here in the lower right-hand corner, it says it was 25 cents. Um, <laughs> I don't know what they cost now. <laughs> Al's not around, so we can't ask him. But uh, this one's dated 1959. And these red lines, this one is showing 18 degrees declination, and the one above it is 18 and a half. Um, we're now at about 12 and a half at Sacramento. So that changes. It, it varies. I was kind of surprised. I didn't realize how much it varied, but uh, it's changed a bit. But um, the real point here is a protractor like that. Uh, this one was one that I had for flying. Um, you can align it with a vertical line on your street map and call that north uh, as long as you convert your bearing on your compass heading to um, true north as opposed to the magnetic that it is um, then you can use that to draw a line of position on your on your paper map um, that works great so here's a theoretical um, triangulation exercise that I did. I used the CalTopo, which is a free online software. Um, I think we used it at a couple of the meetings to try and um, play with it for some of the earlier fox hunt exercises. And what I did is went into the program and just played with this using, you know, what you might do if you were out driving around doing the fox hunt. 
And in this case, I started out at Highway 80 and Bell Road. And unfortunately, I didn't draw the, the, uh, uh, the headings. I just uh, drew these on there. I realized that this morning when I was looking it over that I, I don't have heading information on there. But uh, you know, basically, if, if you were to locate your line of position, your, your null, signal and in this software knowing where you are you could actually um, create a line from that point out at that heading so if you wanted to carry a laptop with you and use Caltopo you could get away with doing that um, it it's kind of a neat program for that uh, in this case, what I did is figured, okay, this is your first line of position. You're, you're drawing a line on the chart, um, and you don't know at this point whether it's behind you or in front of you. I didn't bother drawing the part behind you because that would take a little bit more exercise figuring out how to use CalTopo. Um, so driving on further on down Bell Road, uh, taking another uh, reading, you might end up with another heading. In this case, they intersect, which is a good thing. Um, it kind of gives you some reassurance that your first line of position, now you know it's not behind you, it's in front of you. Um, your second one intersects, but it, it doesn't tell the whole story yet. Keep going. So... Continuing on Bell Road, this is the intersection of Bell Road and Highway 49, and hopefully you're not standing out in the intersection. That's frowned upon. Um, but the good thing is, three lines of position, and they all come together and actually form a little triangle there in the middle. Um, this zooms in on that a little bit. Um, that's good, but you're not done yet, because uh, realistically, it doesn't give you enough to know quite where to go, but it's getting you closer. The next one, uh, there's actually a little uh, kind of development up there that's on a little bit of a hill. Uh, if you stopped in there and took another reading, um, now you're getting a better picture. Things are still agreeing with each other. This is good. <laughs> I've seen worse. Um, this is the blow up of that. And at this point, you kind of have an idea now that, okay, it's on the northeast side of the Highway 49. That happens to be Mills Diner there. There's Luther Road. Um, taking another line of position, you might enter the parking lot there. And, and again, it's, it's getting better. At this point, you might get out of the car and start walking in. Um, if you do that, uh, well, that's where we eat breakfast on Saturday mornings. This is a shameless plug for Mills Diner, 7.30 last Saturday of the month. Come to the club breakfast. <laughs> okay, so what I did here, I kind of added this after uh, coming through the first presentation, doing this fox hunt on July 30th. I learned a heck of a lot. <clears throat> One of them was uh, uh, things don't always turn out like you think they should. So this is the full Monty. Um, I got chicken scratch. Uh, <laughs> turns out, I'll zoom in on it a little bit. Um, as you can see, there's the Fox location over there. And I didn't have really very many good lines that were were giving me a good line of position. I had the attenuation all the way maxed out on my unit, and I guess the, what the high power setting that, that the Fox had, I wasn't getting uh, very good signals. I did get some nulls, but typically, like this, uh, I think this is the, uh, what's that name of that park? Uh, Overlook, yes. I went there first. Um, I went directly to Overlook. What I had done when I printed the map is I highlighted all of the park areas that were in the region of Auburn that we were expecting the fox to be, expecting that um, it was going to be in or near one of the park areas. So 
rather than take a line of position further away, like closer to Mel's, I actually stopped on uh, Nevada Street. There's a, a high place there where they're doing some construction. It would have been a good place to, to do a, um, a reading from. But I, I just went direct on to Overlook Park and thought I'd start there. So I was getting null signals that were pointing back to the northeast, um, down the hill, down the slope. That I knew it wasn't down in the canyon. But um, I was also, in taking these null signals, I was not getting a null signal at my 180. So I just wasn't getting good signal there. I ran into Greg at the park. Uh, <laughs> he spent some time on the west side of the park, and I was over on the east side. We were kicking the bushes for rattlesnakes. But uh, we left there, and, and then down at uh, Railhead Park, well, there was Greg again. <laughs> and uh, Greg kind of made a beeline for the, the uh, west end of the park, and I was seemed to be getting good signal there too, but... Um, I was also getting a stronger null out behind me, and I worked that area quite a bit. Uh, again, I wasn't getting good nulls behind me. I wasn't really, I felt on a good, strong line of position. This one here might have been a good one, or reasonable one, but um, I did take the time to get some readings and then go transfer them on the paper to see if I could make some sense of it. And as you can see, it was kind of all over the place. Um, but I went over to the fairgrounds, uh, the fairground parking lot up there by the 7-Eleven and ran into Tom up there. And we both were taking readings that, that pointed back towards, uh, that would be the the this one here, um, pointed back towards um, just just above the uh, railhead park. So Tom and I went down there, and again, we were getting good signal in the area. I had a couple lines that crossed there. Seemed reasonable, but uh -uh. Uh, <laughs> we went back down to railhead park, and that's where we found out by talking to John on the radio that we were on the wrong side of the railroad tracks. So we decided to go have pizza. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we didn't find the fox. But um, it's just kind of interesting how that worked out. Um, I also did a little GPS experiment based on uh, some earlier discussions we'd had weeks before with other, uh, you know, using the GPS and what it might be useful for. Um, what I did is I have uh, three separate GPS devices, and they record in Gaia GPS. So I would set the GPS there and just let it let it record. Um, the first one was my cell phone, and this was the cell phone and the uh, the GPS. Uh, device that I have uh, were both sitting inches apart at the same time recording, you know, literally at the same time. So this, this red one here is the cell phone, the blue one is the other GPS device, and the green one is uh, my um, tablet. Tablet has a, a GPS in it. As you can see, this, the cell phone went on quite a little expedition all by itself without moving. Um, this is the Samsung tablet, and it did a little better than the cell phone, but it still wandered around. It was happened to be in a different section of the house. Um, I didn't put it where in the window where the other two were. It doesn't quite get as, as good a signal. But again, it went off wandering alone by itself. The GPS receiver I thought was most interesting because... You know, according to Gaia, it only went six feet. Um, it shows these little spikes going out, which I, I think might be when it uh, changes antennas, it, it probably does a little little spike, little jump. But uh, I thought that was interesting. 
This one is a, a device that a lot of pilots use for if they want GPS in the cockpit and they want to hook it up to an Apple or, or iPad or, or in my case, I have a Samsung tablet that I bought for the Jeep. Um, I just wanted a, something reliable. This is what the GPS receiver uh, looks like when you look at this, the status of the satellites. Uh, so it's, it's showing me that it's uh, apparently using 28, uh, or it's getting 28 satellites, but it's using nine of them in the calculation. It tells you which ones and how strong the signal is. Um, it does quite well. The only thing I had a problem with initially learning how to use it was making sure that um, I have to turn this tablet into airplane mode and then turn the Wi-Fi on because that's the only way I can shut off the tablet GPS. So anyway, a uh, couple of resources. There's link to CalTopo. Um, I think these are active links in the PDF file that uh, I guess will be posted. And uh, the Gaia GPS is a link there. There's a free version of you can use on that. Um, and then, uh, of course, there's a W6EK website, which handy one. Uh, but all of these, I think, are active links in the PDF file that the club has. And then the uh, next fox hunt is uh, Saturday, August 27th, after the club breakfast at Mel's. I'm not exactly sure of the start time. I heard this morning on the net it was 9 o'clock, but I'm not sure if it's 9 or 9.30, but... Uh, um, Give it a shot. Um, it can't be any worse than what I did. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you. Good job, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions? You did a great job, Mike. No questions. How about Greg? Do you have a question? Um, Mike, the, we both had a lot of trouble initially. My strategy was go to the top of the hill by that park there and get a broad sweep. And I thought I knew where I was going. And I went there and it's like, it's still not, it's, it's, it just, it was everywhere. What the, the secret for me ended up being a lot of attenuation. What were you using when you were doing the, um, the, the, your, your, your direction finding? Is this still active here? This uh, picture shows the attenuation adjustments that we have in the, uh, um, the unit that we made. And what I did is, uh, after I realized I was having a problem, I jumped all the way to 40 and moved both of them together. And apparently that's the, the proper use of it, is to move both of the uh, little uh, jumpers down to 40 together. Um, and that's what I did. And it, I was still just all over the place. Didn't see any rattlesnakes, though, so I guess it was a good day. <laughs> okay, thank you again, Mike. Let's give him another hand.